Could you survive 80,000 years ago? Hey guys, so I was just thinking. Let's say you find yourself in a situation similar to Turok. Or maybe you built a time machine but made a miscalculation and end up some 70,000 years in the past. How would you fare in your new surroundings? What challenges would you face? What predators would you have to evade? What prey would you hunt? Are you fit enough? Are you clever enough? Let's find out, because I'm certainly not. For starters, I'd like to tell you why I chose 80,000 years ago. So as we all know, modern human populations started to migrate out of Africa only about 60,000 years ago, by most estimates. And by then, the Ice Age was already winding down. So I decided 80,000 years ago was a good compromise, since it was still Prime Ice Age, and there was still plenty of competition from human species, including Denisovans and Neanderthals. So we'll call it 75,000 years ago in Eurasia, which is the setting that comes to mind most often when people think about the Ice Age. Let's start with the predators that you would have to avoid or confront if you're feeling feisty. First off is what I assume to be the most well-known predator of the time, the saber-toothed cat, which is actually native to the Americas, so that's off the table. But we've got the next best thing, a four foot tall, nine feet long beast of a cave lion. Apparently it was quite similar to modern African lions, except for the fact that it was 12% larger, and the males were maneless. It hunted in packs, probably had a hell of a bite, and was larger than modern lions. If you think you can fight off a souped up lion with a sharp stick, then you don't have much to worry about. The rest of us will have to pray that the tricks that the modern African natives use work on these guys, like wearing backwards masks and making tons of noise. That or just avoid these guys the best you can, which is what I'll be doing. Our next major predator is none other than the cave hyena. It weighed in at roughly 225 pounds, which is almost double its modern counterpart. By the way, modern hyenas are not scavengers like most people seem to believe. They are very capable hunters. In fact, they kill on average 20 people a year. And that's modern day where we have guns and stuff. Imagine what kind of damage they could do if you only had a bow and a stick to defend yourself and they were twice as big. Yeah, right. The final predator on my list is the Cave bear? Who named these? We have the cave lion, cave hyena, and now the cave bear? Did everything live in caves back then? I mean, I'm pretty sure bears still live in caves today, at least some, but whatever. Back to the bear. It stood at a whopping 11.5 feet tall when rearing up, which is like double my height. And it weighed as much as 2,200 pounds, which weirdly enough is only half my weight if I'm doing the math right. So for comparison, a modern brown bear weighs in at 1,322 pounds and stands at just over 10 feet tall. Nothing to scoff at for sure. It would absolutely tear you limb from limb if given the chance, but it's still a full two feet shorter and a whole 878 pounds lighter than the cave bear. While bear attacks today are quite rare, that may be because we tend to live far away from their natural habitats. If you make a kill in the woods and don't store it in a safe way, bears are still quite the danger. They will try to steal your food. Like many animals, they don't see you as direct prey. But if you have something they want, they won't hesitate in taking it from you, and maybe even kill you in the process. Let's move on to the prey. First up, we have the much loved woolly mammoth and the straight tusked elephant. I'm putting these two together because they're quite similar and ancient human occasionally hunted both. I'll only be giving the metrics of the straight tusked elephant though because it was more common and quite a bit larger. Now to the elephant in the room. Just how big was it? Well I'll tell you right now. So they weighed in at 4.4 tons and just under 14 feet tall. Slightly less than two Tesla Model S's stacked on top of each other. So it's fair to say these things could have yeeted you a fair distance so you'd have to be careful when poking it with your spear. Ironically though there's evidence that humans used ivory spears when hunting them. That's like someone stabbing you with a knife made from your cousin's teeth. It's just unfortunate. Next up is the woolly rhino. Very similar to the woolly elephant as it's just a hairy version of its modern counterpart. It weighed approximately 2,000 pounds and was about 6.5 feet tall at the shoulders and 12.5 feet long. It was comparable in size to the modern white rhino, which is why I'm just showing you images of that. You can just imagine some fur in that and imagine sticking a stick in it. The next item on the menu is just deer. Just simple deer, nothing special. Just everyday run-of-the-mill deer. Actually, there's a bunch of more manageable things that you could hunt and forage at the time, like reindeer, ibex, aurochs, and an assortment of plants. Next up is your competition. The Denisovans. Now admittedly we don't have much more than a few teeth, a pinky bone, and other scattered fragments of Denisovan fossils available right now. So estimating their dimensions based off of that is kind of impossible to do. But the dimensions of the pinky bone do seem to be similar in size to modern humans and Neanderthals. Possibly just barely smaller than humans. Maybe about the size of a modern female. Because of how little is known about these guys, there's not much I can say besides that. Modern humans interbred a lot with other species. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you get lonely, you know what to do. Hit up kindling and send some smoke signals if you know what I mean.
Just kidding, smoke signals weren't around back then. The final variable in our survival list is none other than the Neanderthal, sometimes pronounced Neanderthal. Well, unlike Denisovans, there are actual substantial remains of Neanderthals, so we can confidently say that they ranged in height from 5 foot 1 to 5 foot 4, and weighed roughly 145 to 170 pounds. Although they were shorter than modern humans, it is commonly assumed that they were much stronger, due to their thicker bones and stockier builds. And although in modern culture we think that we were special, and that we were the only human species that developed culture, and the only human species that developed this level of intelligence, there is evidence of Denisovans and Neanderthals leaving behind art and other technologies that suggest they were capable of keeping up with Homo sapiens on an intellectual level. That being said, modern humans did also interbreed with them, so there may be some danger with Neanderthals though, since there is some evidence of conflict with modern humans. In conclusion, can you evade lions, hyenas, and bears? Can you forage for food and hunt to survive? Can you make alliances with your ancient, more primitive ancestors? I'm actually fairly optimistic about your odds here. Humans did it once and managed to flourish? I'm sure if for some unexplainable paradox causing reason we had to do it again, the human spirit would find a way, as it has time and time again. Thanks for watching guys. You know the drill. Leave a like, subscribe. All the sources are listed in the description and give them a read. They're all quite interesting.